Well, hi there, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages. Rick Adams, your producer for The Deadly Experiment, taking deadly aim at the enemies of truth, which is our God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our families, our nation, and who we are as a people. Caucasian American Jacobite Israel here in this country, America. Now, you can call yourself a Rhode Islander, and I could be a Rhode Islander, but you could be black or Chicano or Mexican, and I could be white and Irish. It doesn't matter. We're still Rhode Islanders, but we're not of the same lineage, are we? Well, the Bible tells us that. The Word of God tells us in the book of Genesis, at the very beginning of this age, when God recreated the earth. That's right, I said recreated. Because in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, there is an explanation that God in the beginning created everything that was. The whole earth, the whole world system. And then in 2, he tells us darkness fell upon the earth, and the earth became void, not was void. It became void. Why? Because God destroyed that earth age. He didn't destroy the earth, but he destroyed the time in which dinosaurs roamed the earth. And why there were, of course, tundra growing in Alaska, which, of course, cannot do today. See, folks, the Bible is a book of history as well as a book of prophecy. And one of the things it tells us in prophecy is that in the end times, this generation of the fig tree planted in Jerusalem in 1947-48, that we would see a flood of lies in the book of Amos, a flood of lies that would take this earth by storm. People believing incredible things, false flag attacks, shootings, massacres at churches, allegedly, despite the fact that Photoshopping has been used. Photoshopping online with the computer today, digitally, you can create a scene in which people will believe it's real, but it will not be real. We're going to show you in the minutes to come a special edition of this program on what happened with CNN, the communist, uh, the, what is it called? I call it the crackpot nitwit network. It has once again proven that Donald Trump was not wrong when Donald Trump said the media are lying to you. I'm not saying he is or isn't either. I'm just saying that that statement was true. So even a broken clock can be right twice a day. The media do lie, folks. The media lie constantly to you. Now, how do you know they're lying and how do you know they're telling the truth? I mean the mainstream, lamestream, blamestream media. Well, you know they're lying to you because you can see the evidence of it on the trail along the way to the White House at this particular time. But years ago, we were lied to in World War I. We were lied to getting into World War II. The Providence Journal, the publisher admitted that he was lying on behalf of the war powers, the Wilson administration, to get us in to World War I. He did his best. Walter Cronkite, the father of the news, told us that when he was a correspondent for CBS radio in the Soviet Union, he did his darndest to present the Soviet Union as a good ally of the United States in the fight against Nazism. So he was doing his job. Edward R. Morrow and others who we've come to know as great men of honor were in fact scoundrels of the media. They were not giving us the whole truth and now we can see it. And the internet has provided you with the mechanism of looking up things for yourself. Now, not everything you find on the net is true because it's been supplanted by the same people who control the mainstream off internet media. You gotta understand that this deception grows daily. And if you don't have the knowledge of God in your heart, which is your mind, your brain, then you're gonna be prey for the mark of the beast in the end. The mark is not on the hand. It's not a tattoo or a microchip in the head. It's in the brain and in the hand doing the work of the one world beast system for the synagogue of Satan. And how do you know that? Well, you know it by looking at the scriptures and by seeking God's face, because he will give you the truth. He will give you the truth if you're honestly seeking the truth in repentance 
And you have to come to God as a sinner, admitting you're a sinner, and ask his forgiveness, ask his blessing in Yeshua's name, Yeshua, God's Savior, Jesus Christ, the Savior of all who come to him. That's what Yeshua means, Savior, God's Savior. So with that in mind, looking back on CNN, and not only CNN, but we can go right down the line. BuzzFeed, we can go through all of the media people, all of the liars in the media who have proven themselves to be liars, lying Lester, lying Brian, come out of the woodwork admitting, yeah, you know, we fudged a few stories. Well, I know that lying Brian has. Lying Lester has not been outed yet. But he's nothing but a front man, an anchor. For those who sit behind the camera and keyboard in the stories and the slant, and AP is notoriously corrupt, the so-called Associated Press, which is owned by Reuters today. It is strictly an entity that is owned and operated by the Rothschild banking conglomerate in Europe. They run it. They own it. And almost every single story, every name of, of, of note is a key knight or is working for them to deceive you. We've seen it in wars of the past, World War I and II. We've seen it in the latest wars and how intel has lied to the American public, how the media lie or swear to the lie that the government says is true. So we've seen that with the CIA, the FBI, and now we have the Homeland Security Department following the attacks of 9-11. And guess what? Why, we have more problems now than we did then. We have new enemies, surprisingly, and we've got to do something about it. Lock down. We've got to spy on you. We've got to check you out and make sure you're a good American citizen or a citizen of Italy or a citizen of England and France following the so-called attacks in Paris and Nice, France. We're going to make you safe, in other words. And who are the people that are making us unsafe? the very same people. So we can go back now in a little timeline of what CNN has done just in the last few weeks and months and years, how they faked news, they faked sets, indeed, through the computer. They've made you believe something that wasn't true. So can you believe them now? Absolutely not. So let's see if we can produce that little video portion by one of our dear friends online in this video that puts together a good timeline of CNN corruption right now. In times of universal deceit, telling the truth is indeed a revolutionary act. Welcome to the times of universal deceit, where you have a front row seat as the powers that be scramble to stifle dissent, control your mind, and change your worldview. And how do they do this? through state-controlled media propaganda outlets. And how do we know they do this? Stay tuned. First, no matter what you may think about Donald Trump in specific or politics in general, there is in our land an epidemic of fake news. And the grand irony of the awareness of this fact is that some of the organizations that warn us about fake news are themselves the prolific propagators of fraudulent articles nefarious practices, underhanded tactics, sneaky deceptions, deceptive programming, and even staged tragedies, all aimed at cramming their agenda down the throats of America and the world. Now, there's a lot of fake news organizations out there, but the current reigning king of state-controlled fake news media is CNN. Here are just a few undeniable examples examples that every person on this planet needs to see. CNN has quickly come to be known as the counterfeit news network, the communist news network, and most glaring of all, the Clinton news network. They themselves admit that they had been the biggest ones promoting the Clinton campaign. She's on her way to deciding. We'll see. About deciding. We couldn't help her any more than we have. <laughs> I know. You know I mean? She's, she's I got know. just a free ride so far from the media. We're the biggest ones promoting her campaign. We couldn't help her any more than we have. <laughs> I know. You know I mean? She's, she's I got know. just a free ride so far from the media. We're the biggest ones promoting her campaign. We also know that CNN stages actors and even makes up stories in order to push agendas like the furtherance of wars in other countries. Remember Charles Jaco? He was the CNN reporter famous for covering the 1990 Persian Gulf War. Here, he and fellow correspondent Carl Rochelle 
were caught staging a theatrical display, a poorly executed display complete with horrible acting, in which they tried to deceive their audience into thinking that they were in immediate danger as the CNN crew played siren and missile sound effects while the stage actors stood in front of a blue screen. My, my apologies for these uh, putting on the gas mask. There hasn't been any gas dropped here that we could tell. You smell uh, anything? No. You, probably, you may smell some of the fumes from uh, a, uh, a missile exhaust going off. The missiles use a rocket, a cordite, some sort of burning. And we just heard a little, little thump just then. But uh, I have to apologize for that. I, I thought I lifted something and felt momentarily uh, dizzy. You're more experienced <laughs> military affairs than I am. But it might have been a little um, gas from the, uh, from the rocket exhaust. There well, apparently wasn't anything. A lot of people have the respirators on just in case. Here, CNN tries to deceive us into believing that this reporter just randomly chose a guy off the streets of Chicago to interview. Turns out, the guy is John Gurkovic, a CNN cameraman, and somebody forgot to let Don Lemon know that this was a staged event in order to promote the idea that the election of Donald Trump wasn't fair and that Hillary should be the president-elect. I believe in you, Hillary. I've been to Rwanda. I've been to your hospital in Rwanda. I've seen all the good you've done. Well, I you believe did. in you. Women need you. Minorities need you. I need you. Chicago needs you. We all need you. This country needs you to stand up and walk into the Supreme Court and say one vote equals one vote. What's wrong with that? What's the debate? You definitely feel his passion. There's other people out here who feel the same way. Don't At one play. point, you had people who were blocking his road. Chicago police moved in. Everything has remained peaceful. Like I said, Don, as you see, thousands of people still continue to gather. But like you heard this man, very passionate about the idea. He doesn't want Hillary to stop. Yeah. Ryan, you know I used to live there, and I know that guy. That's John Gurkovic. He actually went to Africa with me as a cameraman. Don't! But anyway, that's another yep. story. He's, all right, thank you, John. Thank you very much, Ryan. CNN also routinely cuts mics when the truth is being told. And this is not an isolated incident. Check this out. You know, some Republicans out there have been saying that Ron Paul would be very dangerous for this country because he wants to bring troops like you back from your post from all over the world. Well, I think it would be even more dangerous to start nitpicking wars with other countries. Someone like Iran. Israel is more than capable. Sorry, we just <laughs> lost our tech connection, unfortunately. We do uh, stand by here. If you can hear me, we're going to get back. You want to go to Kenny Crowley? Well, on the character issue, the public, you know, two thirds or more of the public knows that Hillary Clinton's a liar. She can't be trusted. And now the two faces of Hillary Clinton are coming out. The fact through WikiLeaks that she says one thing. Uh, and oh, no. All right, let's see if we can get Congressman Collins back. Obviously, we just lost the satellite feed. That sucks. Unless you think that CNN's mic cutting is random and isolated, here's an example where they even cut the mic of their own reporter, Brianna Keeler, when she began to speak the plain truth about Hillary Clinton's hypocrisy. Remember, Hillary Clinton has some vulnerabilities herself, even as she calls for criminal justice reform because of her support in the 1990s for anti-crime legislation that ultimately helped contribute to this era of mass incarceration that she now uh, speaks out uh, again. Uh -oh. uh, we just lost uh, we just lost Brianna Keeler, who was in Springfield, Illinois, where Hillary Clinton just spoke. Abruptly ending interviews when things are said that don't line up with their propagandized narrative is something that the Communist News Network is quite proficient at. They have great disdain for and are highly allergic to the truth. Period. They've been duking people like that. They come out of from under the rocks all the time around this time this year. It got nothing to do with Donald Trump. We're all Americans. I think we need to stop with all the racist stuff and the race being like me and my friend right here. We just met today. We was talking. You know, we got to stop with the racist stuff and, and this, that. we all Americans, man. And nobody paying big to do mind. Um, clearly, <laughs> let, let me just yeah. be clear here. Obviously, the majority of Donald Trump supporters are not African American. I don't know how yeah. many African Americans were in that that building, but that is one uh, person that uh, we have chosen to cut that sound from. Uh. And ending interviews when truth makes an appearance is not just a CNN, MSNBC, liberal media thing. Watch Fox News shut down this interview when Brunel Donald Shea tears into and exposes Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama as the nation dividing racists they truly are.
And it's important to note that the Fox interviewer brings the whole thing to an end right after Brunel talks about the WikiLeaks revelations of spirit cooking and child sex trafficking in connection with the Clinton campaign. What uh, people have to do is stop allowing the president and Hillary Clinton to divide this nation. We want to heal. We want the races to heal. Americans don't want racial division. We don't want uh, citizens against police. We want our nation to go forward in strength. We are stronger together. Hillary Clinton is yes, right. That's we exactly are stronger what together, Hillary but Clinton we are says. stronger without and Hillary Clinton. We can never be together as long as we have a divider in chief and our president, uh, Barack Obama, supporting this woman who's got the FBI crawling all over her. I think that's more important than trying to link Donald Trump to the KKK. How about she's under federal investigation? How about this spirit cooking uh, we're watching in the WikiLeaks? How about this uh, child sex trafficking rings we're reading about oh, in WikiLeaks? On, ladies, that's far ladies. more oh, important than so Mrs. Clinton than the KKK. Theories. It's ladies, not what we need yeah, in the last She's a closet hours. racist. We're closet. Gonna I have racist. so much time we know for she's both out. of you over the next she's week. She's out the closet now. Okay, Brunel, we got to go. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining us. Here, two CNN reporters, Nancy Grace and Ashley Banfield, hold a split-screen supposed satellite interview in the same parking lot. Alternative media journalists quickly pointed out that the same building stood in the background as the same cars zoomed behind the reporters. Even though they were trying for some reason to get their audience to believe otherwise, both Grace and Banfield were only sitting about 30 feet away from one another. So CNN lies to you and feeds you fake and staged news even when they don't have to. CNN has proven time and time again by their actions, their consistent actions, that if they don't have real news, they'll just make something up on the fly embellish or withhold vital truths of a story. And guys, these are just the tip of the iceberg. The examples are many. The false stories from state-controlled publishing companies and networks goes on and on. The internet is replete with examples of fake news coming out of these propaganda machines as they churn out more and more deceptive stories. So when Donald Trump treats CNN and its reporters like this, but since you are attacking no, our news not organization, you, not can you. you give us a chance? Your organization, You are attacking our news organization. Your organization, Can you give us a chance Let's to go. ask a question, sir? Go ahead. Sir, can Quiet. you state... Can, Quiet. Mr. President-elect, go ahead. Can you state categorically... Ask a question. Don't Mr. President-elect, can you give us a question? Don't be rude. You're attacking us. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. Can you no, give us a question? Give you a question. I'm you, not going to give you a can question. You, st you, state categorically, you are fake news. Sir, go ahead. can you state categorically that nobody... No, Mr. President-elect, that's not go appropriate. Ahead. All you have to do is think back to the evidence of CNN's despicable conduct as presented in this video to realize that Trump's statement to CNN's Jim Acosta is absolutely true. And Acosta's claim that Trump's statement is inappropriate is absolutely false. <laughs> oh, I love this country so much. You guys just don't have a clue. Well, Cheryl, it was almost exactly two hours ago when the sirens went off here in Saudi Arabia. Where we are in eastern Saudi Arabia, there was no problem. Now, let me just size my mask and fit it for a second, just like I always do. Stand by, please. All clear. They're... Oh, shh. What are they saying? Are they saying all clear? Yes, ma'am. Were they saying all clear down there just now? All clear, all clear. At the end was a false alarm. Got that, Atlanta? Standing down now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get my hamburger and my coffee. Good. Uh, we just got the all clear. Now. All clear. Every time I order something, this happens. All clear. Thank you. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I'm starting to get real bothered by all this. Boy, did I almost look stupid. <laughs> Charles Jaco, CNN, reporting live from Saudi Arabia. No, wait a minute. Whoa, hold it, homeboy. I'm the talent here, you dig?
of explosions, what may have been uh, an outgoing Patriot uh, ground-to-air missile, uh, some reported airbursts that may, may have been an intercept of an incoming Scud missile. We're really not sure. All we know is that the uh, air raid sirens have gone off, and we've heard the uh, outgoing roar of at least uh, one Patriot missile. We've heard some sort of airburst. We can't tell where it was from where we are right now. Uh, we're waiting to see what's happening. As you can hear, the air raid sirens are still going off around us. People are, uh, strangely enough, uh, used to it. This is the first one of these attacks that's taken place early in the morning, but they're Anything other than uh, what we've got now? What did you see there? Is that a missile going out? No. Uh, we're not. We're not quite sure. We can't show you anything else than what we're seeing right now, uh, because of uh, military regulations. We are not allowed to show you uh, where the missiles might be going, what direction they might be flying in, where the airbursts might be taking place. There's obviously something going on. Uh, we heard another dull roar that shook things a little bit, and we're waiting to see what else is going on. Right now, that's about all we know, that something is happening. We're hearing pops and things shaking. But uh, people are staying relatively, relatively uh, calm around here. People evacuated in an orderly way to the shelters. But apparently, there is something going on. The uh, uh, Patriot missiles, we're assuming their Patriots, have gone outbound. And we've heard some explosions. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, that's about it for, for right now. We'll get back to you when we know something else. Something is happening here and we're watching we're scanning the skies for something else uh coming in but uh, right now we uh can't uh, see much of anything and frankly this is what we can show you on television right now because of uh, military restrictions from both the uh, saudis and uh, the u.s uh cd if you need to take cover i notice uh that you've got your gas mask in your hands if you need we, to put it on we, we please have, do so if you need to take cover have, please do so uh, if you are it. able, if you are able to take a question, uh, did you think that away. the possible threat would be over because it is now morning there? It's what, well, just after the, 6 o'clock in the morning? The, yeah, the whole thing is everyone assumed that the threat would be over because it was uh, early morning. But the thing about Saddam Hussein is that he has never done the expected. And right now we have, uh, you know, once again been... Uh, Surprised with the unexpected, um, an air raid, uh, an apparent attack, although we can't say what the outgoing missiles hit at approximately 20 after 7 in the morning Saudi Arabian time. Um, all the other attacks have occurred from 10 o'clock at night till 4, 3, 4 in the morning. This is the first one to take place uh, in eastern Saudi Arabia during the daylight hours. Now, that sound you hear behind me is the... Uh, Hotel War Richard Thicker. It's not the uh, national by afternoon. So people are looking up in the skies, scanning the skies to see what they can see. Do we see much of anything out there? Can we, can we see much of anything? Okay. Well, apparently there was there was yeah there was some word of uh, of uh, outgoing. Again, there we cannot be specific about the direction. All right, we are now led to understand that there are also firings in another city in Saudi Arabia. Uh, CNN's Carl Rochelle is, is here with me, he just came up. Uh, Carl, I know we can't be very specific given these restrictions, but uh, within those parameters, what did you see? Well, what I saw, I, I didn't see anything hit. I looked very, almost straight above us. There is a vapor trail coming from my right to my left, and there's a cloud of uh, something. It looks like it might have been an explosion, a cloud, uh, a white say. He's uh, putting on a gas mask. There hasn't been any gas dropped here that we could tell. You uh, smell anything? No. Oh. You probably you may smell some of the fumes from uh, a, uh, a missile exhaust going off. The missiles use a rocket, a cordite, some sort of burning. Uh, we just heard a little, little thump just then. But uh, I have to apologize for that. I, I caught a whiff of something and felt momentarily uh, dizzy. You're more experienced <laughs> military affairs than I am, but it might have been a little. Um, gas from the uh, from the rocket exhaust. There well, apparently wasn't anything. A lot of people have the respirators on just in case. And, and uh, again, you uh, you run to get down here. You, uh, in my case, uh, jumped out of bed, uh, hearing the air raid warning go on. You run down three flights of stairs to get out of here. It's probably a hundred yards. You hyperventilate a little bit, and you're nervous. Uh, one thing, one thing we have to point out, just so people won't think 
people are panicking. Most people are in their shelters. They've taken cover in their shelters. And in the time we've been in Saudi Arabia, I've not seen any evidence of panic in the streets or people running around. Well, you know, people are not exactly taking this as a matter of course, but there's been no wholesale panic or anything. People are, are taking orderly precautions to deal with uh, the stuff that's going on right now. Okay, I, again, everything seems to be quiet. What I saw, uh, when I walked down, when I came running down, someone had said, there, there is a hit upstairs over our heads, right straight up, up, up above us. And I looked up, and you could see the vapor trail, the contrail that's made by an aircraft or a rocket at high altitude, and there was a round puff of smoke uh, that indicated something happened at that point. Uh, a lot of smoke, it could be a hit from one of the Patriots taking down a, a Scud missile inbound, or taking down an aircraft, for that matter. But right now, where we are, we have absolutely seen nothing happen. A little boom one time, a small boom, could have been the sound traveling from high on. That's not actually confirming that anything happened. We don't know that there is a hit or anything. We're just telling you what we think and what we see at this point. The air raid sirens are running. The air raid is going on. Could very well be something has happened, but uh, we're all safe right here. The reason I'm wearing a helmet is because it's easier and safer to put it on your head than it is to carry it around in your hand. If you're just trying to be prudent, uh, CD is, uh, is carrying his gas mask with him. I have mine strapped on at my side. Uh, you'll get some indication that there is gas, and one of the indications that there has been gas there be an explosion pretty close to you. There has to be a way to deliver it. As far as we know, uh, they, uh, they have not yet delivered any in a, uh, in a rocket vehicle, in a Scud-type vehicle down in this area or anywhere else. Uh, could happen, but there should be plenty of warning on that. Yeah, Carl, and again, I have to uh, apologize for the audience for yelling gas and putting the gas mask on, but what happened is Carl explained is sometimes when the propellant goes off, I believe that's what it would be, you get this whiff of something, I felt momentarily choked up and dizzy and thought, well, better safe than sorry, and it turned out that was not the case, but again, that could have just been the propellant from the outgoing missile. We have seen streaks outgoing, we heard the a bang, but as Carl said, there's no hard evidence that anything was hit. We know what we saw, but we can't speculate about what was in it or what it was. And so far, uh, there's been no evidence that uh, the Iraqis have been able to use chemical warheads in, in any of these studs. Yeah, I'm, I'm very concerned about chemicals. It's certainly well taken. Uh, I've been through oh, at least three or four uh, breathing fires. Gentlemen. Military and military on this. And just, Gentlemen. Just Carl, I'd like, yes, yes. Excuse me for breaking in. Uh, Charles Jaco, Carl Rochelle. Well, folks, there it is. NBC is no different. CBS is no different. Fox is no different. Any of the networks, and the New York Times particularly, Washington Post, are slime publications, as Donald Trump himself said on the campaign trail. They're dying, you know, enterprises. They're dying from their own weight. The Bible says in his Ten Commandments, God has told us, bear not false witness. Now, that was addressed to us, the Israelite people, against each other. Do not bear false witness against a brother. However, it also applies to those who lie for gain, for profit. And who are they? Government officials, politicians like John McCain, who is one of the neocons that would love to propel us into this next war with Russia, which is coming. Rush, Ezekiel 38 and 39, it's all laid out. People in the media, as we've just shown, they're all at some degree or another, being dishonest with you. God's word is not dishonest, it's true. We don't say we're the word of God, we're just messengers. See for yourself, check it out, and as Jesus Christ said in John 8, 32, you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. We're out of time, goodbye, and Yahweh bless. Salam.